Welcome everybody, thank you for joining us here on the Infinite Prosperity Podcast. My name is Louisa Havers and I help high achievers, entrepreneurs and coaches lift the lid on life and business so that they can live at their highest value. Each episode we will bring you our favourite founders, CEOs and guest experts to share with you their insights and strategies to expand your wealth consciousness, your spiritual leadership and aligned business strategies. We know that living in alignment with your soul's mission is what fulfills you and we are here to show you how to achieve this in an energetically aligned way. If you haven't already, be sure to claim your free abundance activation in the Akashic Records. Go to louisahavers.com forward slash gift to unlock your abundance activation today. And if you'd like my support in having aligned success in life and business, then contact me at www.louisahavers.com and let's explore together if it's an aligned match. Get ready to live at your highest value and to expand into your next level of money as you elevate and receive more. You create more for others. Righty ho, let's dive into today's episode. Welcome back, everybody. I'm so excited. I am joined by a dear friend, Katie Corbin, who is an incredible entrepreneur and business coach. And I haven't caught up with her for a few years. So I'm so excited that she has come and joined us on this show. Welcome, Katie. Thank you, Lisa. I'm so happy to be here. Oh, I can't wait to, to dive into this. So we're going to be talking about the alchemy of success and being able to turn setbacks that all entrepreneurs face at various points in time into triumphs in, in business. And Katie really is the person to, to, to speak to this because Katie is a visionary who's been an entrepreneur since childhood and started her first business 15 years ago with zero money to her name, all from scratch and rose like a phoenix. Absolutely love it. Katie has worked with entrepreneurs worldwide, digging deep in their companies and hearts to pull out their authentic work and leadership skills to have more significant impact and income. Yes, that is what all entrepreneurs want and have come into business for to be able to make that impact. Furthermore, Katie serves as a strategic business mentor, aiding entrepreneurs in reaching influential positions whilst building their profits, their multi-million dollar vision in their respective industries. Oh, Katie, a huge, huge welcome. Thank you. I'd love for us to get started. I know a little bit about your journey, but for our listeners to, as you mentioned, you've been an entrepreneur since since childhood. Take us on that journey. How have you got to where you you know you are today? Because I know the path has had many turns, <laughs> yes. um, and you've got such an incredible range of of business skills. So t- tell us tell us how you got to where you are today. Yeah. So way back in childhood, I actually was always interested in like how to create a service for for money or a product. I actually, when I was a kid, I used to take these special pencils and sell them at a little bit higher rate, you know? So I, so I explored it even as a kid and I laugh at myself now because thinking back, I was like, wow, I was kind of, I was kind of doing that as a child. Um, And so I actually got started on my entrepreneurial journey. Uh, I went to Chinese medical school and I actually became an acupuncturist really early in life. I got my master's at 24 And I just flung myself out into the world because back then alternative medicine in the U.S. wasn't really popular and there wasn't many jobs other than joining a cruise or maybe going to a really big city and joining a clinic there. So I actually graduated and I was like, I just have to get out there and, and provide a service. So I had no idea what I was doing. I had no business skill sets at all. I was good at what I did. I felt confident as a practitioner, but that's really all I had. So I started to figure this out. um, And it was in 2009, right after the recession in the United States, where a lot of people told me like, oh, it's got to be really hard. And there's a recession and all these things. So I started to to take the situation almost like alchemize, right? The situation of maybe where other people would say, oh, this is not a good store. And I just, I used it to my advantage. And actually, I I remember even being in the yellow pages back then because there was no social media. There was none of that. And I was just asking other people, like, what are you doing to be successful? Right, which I think that it's, it, you can model success to some degree. Obviously, we blaze our own trail as entrepreneurs, especially if we tend to have more of a rebel entrepreneur type. But 
but at the same time, there's models of success. What are other people doing around you that actually can contribute to your success? So I had, I've been in alternative medicine 15 years. And actually it's funny because that led me into business mentoring because really people, the universe and people were just starting to ask me, what are you doing? I was asking other people at the time at 24 and they started asking me and I'm like, why are people asking me? I guess I, I guess I'm doing pretty good if people are starting to ask me, what are you doing? How are you doing what you're doing? Which, which I just learned mainly, I had mentors obviously, but I learned a lot from just doing it myself and figuring things out. And it was really interesting to me. I had no idea. I was not set out even to be alternative medicine. It was like the universe had, God just came in and it was, hey, this is what you're going to do and follow that path. And when I became a business coach and a business mentor, it was, hey, here's the opportunity, follow that path. So, and I've been doing that also for a while now because really it was, it was needed, right? I was answering the call. People were asking me, how are you doing what you're doing? And I was like, are you sure you want me? And, and, and it actually evolved into this beautiful, I would say like a a consulting or a coaching business um, around um, leaders in their industries, whether it's a, whether it's, um, you know, a wellness coach or whether it's a doctor. And actually for me, um, I actually really love business. And that was the evolution of of me too as well. I learned to love business by actually getting out there and doing it. I love it. It is in, in the action that we have so much learning, isn't it? Um, it really, and I love how you were responding to the synchronicity that's showing up in, in, in your path. And I think that's such a key um, factor for us to follow the flow and to be able to go follow the path of least resistance. It's there for all of us, but so often we can get diverted and to go down these sort of rabbit holes and have get stuck in business challenges. And some people are stuck in business challenges for, for a long time. And I always think that there is, there's a path through and it's being able to see the subtleties of it to be able to understand that. As you've, you know, through all your experiences and all the people that you've helped, what do you see are perhaps some of the common business challenges that people face that can be sticking points along their journey, whether it's, you know, that path to the first six figures, multi six figures and and beyond? Yeah. So one of the things I often see is people get stuck. They they actually get really stuck in the mud and it's usually around some kind of decision that they need to make. And oftentimes that decision tends to be a growth, like because people can get stuck in comfort and discomfort, especially when you're going past six figures. We tend to get stuck. Oh, it's OK. We're doing pretty good. Why would we change it? Uh, there's going to be more problems on the other side. Uh, who am I to be doing this? Uh all these these areas where we actually can get really stuck around almost like that up level. And I do find it's really interesting because I've watched um, a lot of entrepreneurs kind of dilly dally on these decisions. And, and once the decision is made, it's almost as things start to line up for you. And then you start to say yes to that decision, right? Again and again and again, because I think a lot of people think like commitment, right? And decision making is just one choice. It's just one time that we make a commitment and we make a decision. But really, that's totally false because as we make that decision, we have to remake that decision again. Am I sure? Do I want to continue? Yes, I do. Am I sure? Do I want to continue? Yes, I do. And I think people actually get stuck in that wobble where they're deciding for growth, but they're actually not going for it or they're getting scared or beliefs or fears are coming in around childhood, past lives, whatever it is, they're getting stuck in that process. And then they actually don't really reach the level that they desire. So true. And I I see this as well, where people can get stuck in and focus on the, the problem and feel very purposeful in focusing on the problem. It can become a bit of a mission to, 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 to solve it, to, to fix it which distracts you from the, the the mission that you're 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 here to make because somewhere in the subconscious we may have decided it's got to be a certain way and we're really sticking to it rather than following the 
the breadcrumb trails that the university is going, no, here you are, ta-da, I've got a better way forward for you. <laughs> but it's not matching what we thought it would look like. And we can laugh about this because we've all, I've been there, you know, and it's like, it, I think everybody's been there. And it is kind of comical where you can catch yourself. I always use humor. Like, look at me doing this funny thing. Isn't that interesting that I'm doing that thing again that I thought maybe I had healed or I thought I maybe had moved past. And um, it actually like the subconscious can somewhat get lightened by that, right? We all, we have to do some work around it, obviously. And there's shadow work and there's subconscious work and there's belief work that really can get to the root of it. But sometimes we do have to laugh at ourselves and go like, wow, look at me doing this funny thing again that I thought maybe I had surpassed. And really through that, that process, right? It's a level of awareness to be able to move past that space with grace and ease instead of feeling stuck like something is wrong with me or getting into sort of the guilt and shame cycle of it. Yeah, it's so easy, isn't it, to 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 go down that rabbit hole. What would you say then from your perspective are perhaps some of the, I want to say key qualities that you see that really help entrepreneurs turn setbacks into glorious moments in their business. Yes. So I would say one of the biggest key qualities is is developing a sense of persistence and resilience. So we don't develop resilience through easy times. We actually develop resilience through challenges. And how can you take a challenge and actually see it as an opportunity instead of a problem. So if you're faced with a challenge in your business, whether the challenge is even a good challenge like growth, or it's a, it's a not so good challenge where you're you're facing something, you know, horrible like something like bankruptcy or something, right? So when when you can take that and turn that into an opportunity and go like I'm facing this challenge right now and it's it's difficult. We don't want to bypass the emotions around it. We want to say that this challenge is difficult for me right now. And I'm going to take this challenge and what is the opportunity actually in it? And how can I flip it instead of only looking at the problem? We, we can also focus on the solution. How can we take that challenge and make ourselves even better and even stronger and even more resilient through this challenge? So it's alchemizing, right? It's taking something and turning metal into gold. And if we can flip the, almost like flip the script around it and, and, and look at it in a different, I always call it like a higher perspective. What's the higher perspective here? But when we're blinded by our perspective and our small thinking, we tend to just look at the problem and, and obsess about it versus what's the higher perspective here and how can we develop ourselves through this perspective? So that's, a way of, I would say, one thing, either entrepreneur keeps going or they give up, right? There's there's only two choices on that aspect. De resilience is often developed through that. Don't give up. Keep going, even when it gets hard, because it's going to get hard. We're not going to, I'm not going to sit here and pretend after 15 years of entrepreneurship that it was easy, that all of a sudden I woke up and I went from zero to whatever figure, right? It, it's not, it doesn't happen in that way. Um, you know, can we can have quantum leaps and all these things and we can have big, big uh, um, triumphs in our process where we can go, but, you know, that just doesn't happen. So I would say that's the biggest thing that I find. And then I would say a second key quality is having some kind of faith, right? So having some trust in either yourself, right? Which we develop trust in ourselves through trusting ourselves and putting ourselves in situations that maybe we would feel uncomfortable in. And then also I find that faith in a higher power can also be a, a bigger picture going God, universe, whatever we want to call it, spirit source, that we're guided in a direction and we're also supported in that direction. If we are, if we are willing to look at that, even when there's bad times, even when there's hard times, where can you hold on to your faith even when it feels invisible? That's so good. So true. One of the things is, um, I think is really helpful. And I see this too with my clients as well, is that aspect of, of being able to trust the universe and to trust ourselves. And the, the two are really entwined. If we are doubting ourselves, we are doubting the, the, the universe. And it really is a, a journey of developing our relationship with trust. Um, and somewhere along the way, 
And I forget where I heard this from, but it's something that I share with my clients as well, is that the universe is never late. And I think it's such a beautiful phrase to really contemplate and to embody as with turning um, you know, the the metal into gold and creating the alchemy is when we're on that path of the how can the obstacle become the way? Like this is feeling really, really uh icky. <laughs> Please show me the, the the way to to be able to really hold that the universe is is never is never late. What do you what have you seen then in terms of some of the the setbacks that you've turned into 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 gold in in your business or your your clients? Oh man. Uh yeah, so I've had quite a few setbacks in my life. Um and some of them were actually really good. So even when my son was born, right, which is a beautiful uh a beautiful thing and I was waiting my whole life for my my children, you know, I always wanted to be a mom and I remember when my son was born and I actually was in private practice at the time solely. And I was like, what am I going to do? I'm not, I'm not making any money outside of myself at this point. How am I going to do this? Because somewhat it, people could wait for me, right? They could wait for me to take maternity leave and come back. But actually in that moment, I was like, this is going to be when I hire my first associate. And that was an opportunity for me outside of me, right? To go, hey, you actually have to really create a business, not just you as a solopreneur bringing money in only for you. So I turn that opportunity right, that could be a beautiful, obviously, like the birth of my son is beautiful. But then I look at my business and it's also somewhat of my my child because right, I developed it and I brought it into life and and I could have them both. So I know like a lot of moms too out there that like, oh, do I have to get rid of my business. No, you actually can create your business with your child. And I remember even with my son, I brought him to work. I just brought him, I brought him into work. My mom actually worked with me at the time and uh, she took care of him while I saw clients. So it was a, a opportunity to go like, oh my gosh, this is a big problem. Well, it doesn't have to be a problem if we look at the opportunity in the situation. The second time was actually the birth of my daughter. And these are just a few of the things that I had alchemized where Actually, after the birth of my daughter, I felt actually better than the birth of my son after my daughter having the second child. But I got this actually back injury. I hurt my back really bad, like spontaneously. And then I had to work through this problem of a back injury. And I actually learned how to alchemize that even more. I hired more people. I started coaching more. So it actually gave me an opportunity to look instead of going like, oh, my gosh, I'm I'm going down the drain. Right. Like this is a this is a big problem. I actually looked at the opportunity involved in that and how do I actually make this work for me instead of everything is working against me. That's so good. So good. As you were sharing that, it, you reminded me that often what gets us to one point in business isn't the thing that's going to take us to that next level. And so often if there's a sticky point, actually something else is being asked to to come through or there's another opportunity that, um, you know, maybe the blinkers are on and we're, we're just kind of not, not seeing it. I think I was just trying to remember when did we meet? I think it was when you were bringing your business online. Uh, yes. Yeah. Which is a big transition to, to make from having a bricks and mortar business to, to, to coming online. Were there some key things for you in, in that uh, transition that, were setbacks because there's so many people coming online now and it's different whilst business principles you know are true um across all businesses there's going to be different nuances and subtleties what were uh some of the the tips from your experience that you could share if there's someone who's about to do that yes that transition themselves this is a great question and thank you for asking this question because for me, when I was in person forever, pretty much, and I started in person, it's hard to even, and I am very resilient around, like my mind is very flexible, but still when you're in a space and you're doing a thing that is hands-on in a person, with a person in person, it is very different to shift the mentality that I can make money outside of a space. And, and really I had to shift my mind to go, there's still value here outside of 
being in person. And this is even true for somebody like a therapist, right? Where a therapist is maybe sitting in person in a brick and mortar, they're in front of the person and even going to Zoom can be kind of weird to go like, oh my gosh, somebody's going to pay me to sit in my, this is my home office here. Um, somebody's going to pay me to sit in my home office to do what I was doing in my my work office, which has like, you know, the ambiance is different. It's obviously a different experience when you're in front of somebody. Um, it really was a mindset shift for me. And then the second thing I would say is when I started to make money online outside of me, where I'm not having to be in person with somebody when it comes to uh, recordings or courses or uh, products, and they're they're not sitting in front of me. And then I get a you know, an email or something that comes through is like, oh, you made some money and you're just not doing anything right now. That was a really big shift for me. Actually, when I first sold my first course, it was a massive shift versus being in person and taking, you know, credit card and swiping the card and thank you for your, you know, they're saying thank you for the service. It was massively shifting in my mind. And I was like, wow, I knew it was possible, but when it comes to belief, we can get so caught in our head until we actually see it happen that we can start to like ingrain, right? It's like that weird thing where we start to ingrain the belief that, wow, this is actually possible. And it's possible not only now, but over and over and over again. That's so, so true. I love how you reflected on that because you were reminding me of my own experience having gone from for me from that employee where the money came in through one person if or one company they paid me once a month you know i didn't have lots of money coming in from lots of different businesses and that really was a big shift recognizing hang on it's not all going to come in from one contract it's coming in from lots of different contracts and being able to kind of start to feel it's a different of course it's just part of our identity feeling safe and expansive with with being able to receive money in in that completely uh completely different way it's something that actually i see for people who are transitioning from that employee world into entrepreneur world some people can get stuck in the beginning phases and i think it's and it's to do with the diff different layers of identity i think identity is so important um, for being able to navigate through that next phase in business whether it's those early days if you're transitioning from corporate to, uh to entrepreneur land or six figures to seven figures and and uh, and all the things there's so many uh experiences that people can have along the way that uh give those opportunities like you were saying to be able to turn that the, the obstacles into into the triumphs i'd love to know katie as you're sort of contemplating this and thinking about you know with all, everything that you know and all the experience that you've got what would you say are like three tips for entrepreneurs that they could walk away with to hold close to their heart as they're facing setbacks to be able to yeah. move through them yeah so i would say first tip is to feel the setback right we don't want to bypass the setback so acknowledging that this is a hard situation acknowledging that you don't know what's going to happen acknowledging the unknown acknowledging that this is part of the process and i would say instead of a lot of people can bypass it and go like oh what's the opportunity wait 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 we're not there yet we need to acknowledge and bring awareness to that this is a really hard situation that you're in right now and allowing yourself to feel validated that you're not you're in fear or you're in um uncertainty or you're in discomfort and when we allow ourselves to actually go into those spaces, right? It's sort of like the void. I always call it like the void. So when we go into the void, we feel all the crap in the void and it never feels good. It's it's actually really horrible. It feels like, what if I live in a box for the rest of my life? And what if I go bankrupt? And what if all these things happen? And, you know, you can actually go into all of those void and what ifs. And actually that helps you to transmute and transform those experiences into something else now we can always sit in the void and go like oh poor me this sucks and you know we don't want to get caught in the void we also want to transcend out of the void but the first tip would just be to acknowledge like where you are in this moment and a lot of times we can say like okay so we're in the first phase of business in the first phase of business it's hard 
<laughs> you're going to question yourself in that first phase of business because it's all often like a roller coaster. It's up and down. You don't know where your next client's coming from. You don't know where the money is coming from. You, you know, you may have overhead. You may not. Well, everybody has some kind of overhead, but it, you're in the void and it's difficult and it's going to be difficult for a period of time. However fast you transmute out of that is somewhat our choice, right? The second tip I would give is once you get into the challenge, start to make decisions that are going to bring you out of it. And I actually like to use um, scenarios like here's your A plan and here's your B plan and here's your C plan. What what path are you going to take? And oftentimes when we choose a path, it doesn't mean everything has to be super rigid. Like this is the only way our plan works. And this is, you know, we have to take this step and this step and this step. It, that's not true. If you choose and make a decision, the path actually starts to weave itself. And this is somewhat of the beauty of it. We need to make a decision that we're going to choose to continue down that path. And then when that decision is made, look around you, right? This is the third tip. What is showing up for you? Right? What opportunities are present for you? And then what are you going to say yes and no to in those opportunities? Because you know opportunities are also going to come in in that path. And some of them are yeses and a lot of them are actually no's. Because right? we, if we say yes to everything, our energy is going to get diverted and our energy is going to get scattered. And we're going to say yes to all these opportunities. And the majority of them are just going to be energy sucks, right? So it's important to acknowledge in those decisions where we're feeling the thing, we're saying we're in the void, we're choosing to choose out of that void, we're choosing to take another path, right? A decision is made to choose out of that. And then what shows up, Louisa, beyond that? And what do we say yes and no to? So that's kind of, I know it's like a pathway and a journey into the, the tips, but I feel like that is important where we make those decisions to choose out of that space of that void. And that void is the challenge. And that's really where we develop. We alchemize the lowest lows lead to the highest highs. So if you choose to, right, we don't choose to go low. Nobody, I, I would prefer... I don't know about you, but I would prefer <laughs> what if it was just beautiful butterflies and rainbows the whole time and everything just came so easy. And, it, you know, you showed up and everybody wanted to work with you and you were super popular and all these things. I just I don't think that happens. Right. So it, it it's it's a choice we can make along the way. But allow yourself the space to choose something, uh, something greater than that, that low that you're experiencing. Oh, that's so good. So good. There's so many things there that you were saying that are write it down as Katie. Um, yeah. And I think um, one of the things that as we're thinking about that, those different paths that we've got the choice to, to make is um, as you were saying about the, we've always got a choice is, is you reminded me of the aspect of our being able to have our relationship with responsibility and how that changes as we grow our businesses because often we want the rainbows and the butterflies things to be nice and easy of course and all the things that we're doing around uh creating that emotional resilience that you were talking about are going to help us things to feel easier because we can cope with things in a more resilient way here's that aspect of not often people talk about this about how our relationship with responsibility evolves how have you seen it evolve over your journey of your business growth yes responsibility is such a funny word isn't it because we all have this thing attached to it i think in childhood like be responsible this is what it looks like this is the way that yeah. responsibility looks like you're supposed to get a job and be a good blah 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 and this and that and it's like it's attached actually to things that actually don't really mean that you're being responsible because i think along the journey it's like you you sort of have to be a little what we would get irresponsible as a business owner because you're choosing something completely different than the majority of people are choosing you're saying that i'm going to make my own job and i'm going to create this business and i'm going to do it this way instead of being responsible and and going through a schooling or whatever it is even though you know a lot of entrepreneurs still go through schooling but it's 
it's like that responsibility or what what responsibility means to people has to shift. It really does. What we've been taught to be responsible might not be the way that you're being responsible. Now, mm. when we have that mind shift too as well, we still have to take actually being an entrepreneur, you take radical responsibility for your life, right? I would even say it's even a higher level of responsibility. Not that there's a hierarchy here, but you're not eating unless you you go out there. Like your family is not going to have a house over their head if you're not out there getting clients or whatever it is. So you actually take radical responsibility for yourself, your life, your money, your job, everything. So even though it may not seem like initially it's a societal responsibility that you're choosing, it's a actually sovereign, radical responsibility that you're choosing for yourself. And also it, in, in like the subset of that, I would say it's a radical responsibility around trust because trust is the base of responsibility in entrepreneurship. It's it's what everything is sort of built off of. Even if you go like, hey, it's not like I've always trusted myself in my life. It's not like I always have a 10 out of 10 trust that I know this is going to work out and this is going to be great. The truth is the underlying trust is really what sort of feeds that responsibility. It's what allows us to go like, I know how to figure this out. And even if I don't really know, I know that it's going to work out for me. So I feel like the the loosening, it's almost like we have to sort of cut the cords around what we've been taught that responsibility is and means. And then we create almost like our own definition of radical responsibility around what it means for us as an entrepreneur. Now, the other thing is I coach people through this where they're being fed like ex, uh, associates, colleagues, whatever, like are you being responsible? Like they're almost like this, this fear comes in of other people and their version of responsibility. And I always say for, for my clients, I'm always like, hey, that's theirs. Like you don't have to take that on. As, that's their fear. They're scared of, of what you're doing. Like they can't imagine themselves doing that themselves. So they're just projecting their own fears. You don't have to take that on. That's theirs. Give that back to them, right? Return to sender. That's their that's their version of responsibility. That's so true. So true. It comes up so often for people, whether it's at the beginning of your business, whether it's at that six figures, whether it's when you're making a big decision about hiring a team member or or whatever it may be. We just get that programming for, for from other people and, and their fears coming in. There's so much gold here, Katie, um, really uh, just to kind of recap in terms of highlighting some of the aspects that you've talked about in terms of those qualities that really help people to alchemize the, the metal into, into gold. It, you, you've spoken about the being able to develop that emotional re resilience and being able to take that higher perspective and to be able to really have a strong relationship with your own responsibility and your own relationship with trust There's some really key qualities for people to be able to have the success that they desire ultimately in in business is there any final thoughts before we wrap up and i would love for you to share your free gift and how people can come and find you and come into your world and all the things yes i i always <laughs> I always wrap up like this, but if you're an entrepreneur, just know that there's going to be, there's going to be along the path, there's going to be challenges. Don't give up, right? Because like I said earlier, where you either choose to continue and not give up or you do give up and you choose something else, which isn't the worst thing. But if you want to continue to choose, just know that there's opportunities out there, whether it's seeking out um, some kind of mentorship or it's seeking out some kind of uh, knowledge or wisdom, which you don't know quite yet. Just don't give up and just keep moving forward. Now, it, to find me, I'm really um, active on Facebook. So you can find me at Katie Corbin on Facebook. The other thing is, is my website, uh, katiecorbin.com. I do have a great um, uh, free, uh, it's called the success ritual or the, the success ritual kit. And it's right on my website if you want to opt in and download that. That is a that's something I created about a year ago where I took 
um, like a ritual around how to create more success in your life. And I find that rituals are very helpful for people. They bring us back to trust, um, order, um, and, and really ground us back into reality. Love it. That's awesome. Thank you so much. We'll pop the links um, below the in the show notes as well. Thank you so much, Katie, for, for sharing your heart and your wisdom. This has been a powerful conversation. Thank you so much for, for coming on the show. Thank you, Louisa. It's been amazing. And thank you, everyone who's tuned in to listen. We hope that this has served you. We'd love to know what your takeaways are. Please do come and find Katie and me uh, on, on Facebook and let us know what you thought. Do share the episode with anyone that you think that this would help as well. And until then, we will see you in the next episode. Sending you all lots and lots of love. Take care now. Thanks for listening to the Infinite Prosperity Podcast. And if you like what you've heard and want to know more, please go to louisahavers.com. We just appreciate you so much. So thank you for listening and hanging out with us. If there's anything that we can do for you, you can email us at louisa at louisahavers.com. Let my team know if you have any ideas for shows that you'd love to hear or topics you want me to talk about. Really looking